Okay, so today we are talking about bonding and specifically the types of bonding. Nonpolar, polar, ionic, and metallic. Okay. Bonding comes because atoms want a full shell, right? The octet rule, um, they either want to get rid of electrons or they want to take electrons so that they have four, uh, full shell. shell. Carbon has four valence electrons, so he's going to bond four times to fill his shell. And it's really easy to see that. It's really easy to see that when we look at the periodic table because uh, these guys are the guys that already have a full shell, so they don't do anything. These guys are one away, so they're going to take one. These guys only have one, so they're going to give one away. What that results with is fluorine is the strongest. He wants electrons the most. Francium is the weakest. He wants to give them away the most, so everything kind of goes this direction. Right? The farther you go this way, the more it wants electrons, and the farther up you go, the more it wants electrons, and that's electronegativity. Okay. So when we're looking at that, when we have this electronegativity idea, if we have fluorine and we bond him to another fluorine, both of them are super duper strong, and so the electrons are going to end up right there in the middle. Okay, they're not closer to this guy, they're not closer to that guy, they're right in the middle. And so because of that, there is no charge in this molecule, so we call it non-polar. Alright, so let's look at that, that polar idea in that word. Um, there is a bond that is polar. All that's going back to is like the poles of the earth, a, a magnetic, a positive and a negative side. All right, and in compounds that are the exact same, so we'll switch up a little bit, but carbon, carbon, the exact same, there isn't a positive or a negative side. The electrons are right in the middle, so we're just going to say there isn't a pole, nonpolar. Okay? Polar, then, is uh, when they're close, but not the same. Okay, and ionic is when they are far away. Well, where's the cutoff line? Where do we say this is ionic and this is polar? Well, going back to our periodic table, that cutoff line is right there. If I have two on this side of that line, it is polar. If I have one over here and one over here, it is ionic. Okay, so uh, metallic then is when two metals bond. All right, and let's uh, look at the periodic table one more time and clarify that. All right, so going back to this little line that we just drew. Okay, anything above this line is a non-metal. Okay, quick, easy way to remember that. Oxygen is not a metal. Okay, anything below this line is a metal. Okay, iron is a metal. Okay, or uh, gold is a metal. All right? Um, so if I have two nonmetals, it is polar. Okay, both are polling. And one is winning.
if I have one nonmetal and one metal, it is ionic. If I have two metals, it is metallic. Okay. A um, couple of quick things, other notes, really quick. Um, polar and nonpolar. sometimes just grouped together under the term covalent. Okay, both of them are two nonmetals. Um, the, the difference between them being that nonpolar is the same. Uh, so boron, boron, sulfur, sulfur. Um, polar is two different ones. Uh, so carbon, fluorine, uh, boron, sulfur kind of idea. Um, but both of those would be covalent. And that should be it. Thanks.